Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to today's edition of The Fishing Teacher, and thanks a lot for swinging by the channel, spend some time with me today, always appreciate that. And guys, today I'm gonna share with you a post-spawn jerkbait secret that guys, it has been productive for me for 25 years, every time from about late April to late May, this technique works. So I wanna clue you in on this so you guys can get ready here. In about three weeks, this thing's gonna start working, and uh, I think it's gonna add up to some really good fish for you guys. I'm also a real quick invitation to everybody out there. If you haven't had a chance to subscribe here to The Fishing Teacher, I'd like to invite you to hit that subscribe button. That's much appreciated. Also, anybody interested in booking an on-the-water lesson with me, you can do that by going to my Facebook page, Randy Block at Professional Angler, and just shoot me a private message. So much appreciated. Okay, guys, this technique, let me give you a little history in this. Back in May of 1983, there was an angler called Jimmy Crisp that won he won a hundred thousand dollar it was called the u.s open bass tournament at Tabor rock in 1983 in may a hundred thousand dollars which was a huge purse in 1983 it's the biggest they only paid i think fifty thousand for the bassmaster classic then this was a hundred thousand dollar tournament and he won it in may on Tabor rock lake on a seven inch uh giant rapala jerkbait minnow this was this bait was designed for stripers it was seven inches long and ever since then, guys, I started using that big Rapala Mena every May to catch fish. But what I want to show you guys today is the bait that took that over for me about the, the past seven or eight years. And this that's this big Megabass Kanata. This is a seven inch jerk bait. And I'm going to give you guys some tips and advice on what to look for and how to fish it in May. Because guys, there's a window of about three or four weeks that this thing is going to work under the right conditions. I want to clue you in on that. And also guys, I'll link the uh, Kanata in the description of my video for my Tackle Warehouse link. Just get, I just pick a couple of them up to try this out. This is my favorite color. This is called the Edo Tennessee Shad. I've got just tons of them on this particular one here. So anyway guys, this is a completely different situation from a normal jerk bait. You can see the difference here. Here's just the normal 110. You can see how much more huge the Kanata is from the 110 here. And what happens, and I'm not really sure what the deal is, but after the fish spawn, after they're done spawning, and before they move into their summer patterns, this is the technique that works. What you wanna do is you wanna find a bluff on your lake. The, you gotta have water visibility of anywhere between, say, two and a half to eight foot visibility, which, you know, a lot of lakes have that two and a half clarity to eight foot visibility. Get on main lake or creek bluffs, and you take this big canada here, guys, and just cover water, making long casts parallel down that bluff. Now, obviously, there's going to be some situations that work a little bit better, like, you know, towards the bluff ends or on rock transition or, or something like that. But it's all about fishing these bluff banks parallel. It helps if you got some wind. It helps if you got some clouds. Will help, will help the whole situation. In fact, the ideal scenario, let me give you the perfect scenario. If you've got say three to four foot of visibility, you've got water temperatures in the 70s, you've got some wind, and you've got partly cloudy skies, this is gonna be really good for that. Now, this thing requires a different way to work it. It's the only jerk bait that I fish on a bait caster, and I fish it on that Mega Bass Perfect Pitch Rod. You need a fairly stiff seven foot rod with it because the bait is heavy, and you need that stiffer tip in order to uh, you know, get that bait to react. <clears throat> if, you have, if you have too soft of a tip on there, it sort of dulls it a little bit. So I'll link all that. I'll link the rod in the description of the video too if you guys would like to check that out. But you throw it out there, guys, and as soon as it hits the water, just start jerking it down hard, jer jerking it reeling hard, getting it down to the depth. And it's like, when you jerk it, it's like jerk, jerk, pause, jerk, jerk, pause, jerk, jerk, pause. You're not letting it pause, but just a second, and you're snapping it hard like that. And that causes this jerk bait to really dart back and forth. And the side on this thing, it's such a wide side that throws off a huge flash. And they, the fish can see this flash from a long way away. That's what causes them to get it. When they hit it, guys, they like to take the rod tip out of your hand. I mean, it just, it's a super aggressive strike. So anyway, guys, just pick a couple up there on my Taco Warehouse link, get you out there. Like ideal situation is like the first week of May, get on those bluffs, Get a day where the wind's blowing a little bit, where you can drift down with the wind. Don't throw this thing into the wind, throw it with the wind, and just cover water on those bluffs. And if you got a lake that especially has some type of mix of largemouth and spotted bass, 
super good way to catch them. It's one of my funnest ways to fish. Not very many people do it and it, it will get you some good bites. So hope it helps out. We'll talk later.